This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Well, at the end of our first session here in uh, Chapter 18, we looked at Example 2. And as you can see, we've got our basic loss memorandum working here, still showing in relation to that example. Let me just remind you what we were doing there. We identified in which accounting period the loss was sustained. We saw that it, as usual, is a year end. It was the 31st of March 21. And because we could clearly see that the amount of loss was bigger than the total profits of the current period, there was only one source of other income there, the interest receivable, that it meant that we were then going to have 90 less, 10, 80,000 pounds worth of loss to carry back. So we would set up one computation showing the relevant accounting periods in columnar fashion, entering the information from the question into our answer. This would be a section C question that we would be dealing with. And the only difference to what you see in the question is that the loss becomes a nil assessment and we would want to have established after each of those two figures were recorded for the relevant accounting periods the total profits and then after those total profits you would then be able to show firstly the current period relief and secondly the carry back relief it was simple enough, as we know, the current period in this loss memorandum working over here was 10. The carry back, well, what did we have there? 70,000. The loss is 80. We used all of the available loss against the available profit there. And we therefore used a further 70,000, leaving us with 10,000 to carry forward. And that would be a notational answer then as no further information was given about the next period's profits, which would simply say, carry forward to set off against any part of the future total profits of that company. Okay. Now, in this example, the previous accounting period was as you'd expect it to be, just another normal year end. Well, now we progress to look at example three, where we will immediately notice an important difference. And it's one that's frequently tested in terms of exam questions, just to make the carry back claims a bit more interesting than they might otherwise be. Now, here we discover that the year ended December 21 is our loss making period. And that is a loss of £40,000. Now, we know that we're going to put a columnar working together to show the relevant accounting periods in which the loss may be used. There is your current period, and we know that that loss, if you use it in the current period, will go against the total profits of the current period. The only continuing source of income throughout each of the accounting periods is the interest receivable there. We're also given some capital gains, uh, capital loss information. We'll come to that in a moment. So in the current period, we'd be able to, and if you choose to make the claim, which we will here, because we will assume loss relief is taken as soon as possible at the earliest available opportunity, again, a frequent examiner requirement, we will be using £1,000 of this £40,000 loss against the other amounts chargeable in the current period. Again, before deduction of qualifying charitable donations, and that means, of course, a wastage of those £500 worth of donations. But having done that, that then allows a carry back. How far back can we carry it? 12 months. We don't just go against the previous accounting period, though it normally equates to that, it's 12 months. And that's where this is more interesting, because this immediately preceding period is just nine months. The nine months to the 31st of December 20. What has happened, as you'll see when we go back to the earliest period mentioned here, we had been preparing accounts to a year ended 31st of March, the last such one being the year ended March 20. The company had then decided to change its accounting date to 31st of December and use the next 31st of December, 
the 31st of December 20 there as the first such new accounting date. We then moved on with our normal year end date, December 21. But what it means is that when we do our carry back, we will be able to go back not just to the previous accounting period, but if the amount of loss that remains out of the 40,000 having used 1,000 in the current period, 39, if that is big enough to wipe out all the total profits of that nine month period, then because the carry back is 12 months, we can go back against the year ended March 20. But not all of the total profits of the year ended March 20. What fraction of those profits, what amount of those profits can we then go against with any remaining balance of loss still available for carry back? Well, we come back nine months. The carry back is 12 months. So it will be, of course, three twelfths of the total profits of what is a year end, the 31st of March 20. Our claim there will go against in full three months worth of the total profits of the year ended March 20. Remembering again that in both the current period and the carry back claims, we go against total profits, which is before the deduction of donations paid. Now we have an added bit of interest in this question because we've got two other amounts that may be chargeable to corporate tax. One, a continuing source of income, as we've seen, the bank interest. But then we're given information about chargeable disposals that have occurred. And what we discover is that back in the year ended March 20, we sustained there that capital loss of £1,000. So remember, what can you do with a capital loss that arises in an accounting period? Well, if there'd been other gains made in that period, it would have been netted off. So the figure that we've got here as regards the capital loss of 1000 would be any net capital loss that exists for that period. We would firstly have to have offset losses in the current period against other gains. But now it's a net loss for that period, then you can't offset it against income. So what's the only other possible use? Carry forward. So before you ever knew that you were going to make that future trading loss, that 1000 capital loss would have been carried forward to set off against future chargeable gains. And guess what? Their next accounting period, there is a future chargeable gain. So what would have happened? That £1,000 would have been offset against that six, bringing the amount of net gain to include within the corporate tax computation for that nine month period down from six less one, i.e. to £5,000. So that's got to be done before you then start to use that loss £40,000, that trading loss, the major objective, of course, of this exercise. But before you start to use that trading loss, you've got to show the use of the capital loss. So you need to now set up two workings in terms of your answer. The first part of your answer to record and to show how you use those losses will, as per the question, list out the accounting periods in columnar form, in chronological order. And we've got them year ended March 20, nine months to December 20, year ended December 21. You will then show any trading income assessment. That, of course, is the 25,000, the 20,000. And then, of course, a nil assessment for the year ended December 21. We don't put the bracketed figures in will then show any other amounts chargeable to corporate tax. So we have our bank interest income assessments. We list them out across the page, 3,000, 1,000, 1,000. We then got the capital gains. We will show, of course, in that year ended uh, uh, March 20 there, not a negative. Remember, we don't show negative bracketed figures on the computation. That will be nil gain made in relation to year ended March 20. 
you will then have a working to record that be working one or something the chargeable gains in the nine months to December 20 which will simply show in that working you will have capital gain 6,000 less capital loss brought forward 1,000 and that gives 5,000 and that will go in on the face of your presentation there the columnar format for each accounting period we've got trading income interest income and where applicable that net capital gain after that you would then be you won't write the numbers in yet but you'd have there the total profits figure to record as being the sum total of those items after total profits you then show your current period claim first of all you know what that is that 40,000 loss that we've got there will firstly remove that 1,000 that means it'll bring your uh, reduce those profits down to nil and that means that that 500,000 uh, sorry 500 pounds I think we give 500,000 to charity that 500 pounds there is going to be lost it will be wasted you'll have a note to that effect in your loss memorandum you'd have started with the 40,000 you'll show current period 1,000 and therefore carry back capacity is now 39,000 you will then go back to the nine month period there will be more than sufficient loss to take out the amounts chargeable the total profit of that period and that will still leave loss to go back against three months worth of the total profits of that year ended March 20. That's a time apportionment. If after applying that loss against total profits, there will still be some loss left over, then a written note to say what will happen to it. If you've gone current and carry back claims to the extent they're possible, there's only one other way to go and that's your carry forward claim. So I want you to have a go at this now. Get those columns set up, transplant the information from the question to your answer, remembering if there's a loss, it is nil, and remembering to net out the carried forward capital loss of 1,000 against the gain of 6,000 in the nine month period to December 20. Having got down to total profits, you will then leave a gap to record your current period and carry back claims before then showing the qualifying charitable donations being deducted. Those loss reliefs before the deduction of the donations paid. Once that is set up, your loss memorandum, of course, there, that starts with 40,000 and you show current period, 1,000, and then split the carry back claims into two. Firstly, this nine month period here and then back to the year ended March 20 but showing your workings just three months worth of the total profits being able to be relieved so I want you to get on with that now so pause this lecture at this point and then when you've had your attempt at this particular exercise in the structure and format I've just outlined then come back and uh, we'll go through that answer together and hopefully clear up any queries that may be outstanding. OK, well, let's see how you fared, therefore, in relation to that example three. Now, again, the two main uh, documents, as it were, that you present within your answer, you got your basic listing in columnar form of the accounting periods in question. The year ended uh, March uh, 19. Oh, that should be March 20 there. Apologies for that. We'll get that changed. Nine months to December 20. And the year ended December 21. We just copy out the trading income figures with a nil assessment going in for the loss making period. Copy out the interest income figures as we would any property income figures. In terms of capital gains, we firstly sustained a loss. So that again is a nil assessment, no bracketed figure. And in working one, we demonstrate what has happened to that loss. It was carried forward to set off, of course, against working one, the capital loss of 1,000 carried forward to set off against the 6,000 pound gain, what appeared in the next accounting period, reducing that, therefore, down to 5,000. 
So now we can get our total profits for each period prior to any deduction of firstly lost reliefs and thereafter, if there's still something to deduct them from, the qualifying charitable donations, which is the last figure to be deducted in deriving the taxable total profits of each accounting period as revised for the use of this loss. So we've got our total profits, 28,000, 26,000, 1,000 pounds. If not already, we set up our loss memorandum working. There's the trading loss for the period of loss. The year ended uh, December 21 there. Yep, year ended December 21. The current year or current period relief, you might want to call it, £1,000. Then our carry back. Now remember, it's a 12-month carry back. This previous period was nine months. So all of that £26,000 would be used. So there's your 26000 following, of course, what was the first claim, as it always is, in the current period. So we've now used 1,000, 26 is 27,000 out of the 40,000 loss. We've still got some 13,000 pounds of loss left over. So where do we go next? We can go back our full 12 months. So against that 28,000, we can offset the further three months worth of carry back to bring it to a full 12 month carry back. So three twelfths of 28 will be 7,000 pounds. Therefore, 7,000 is the loss. And that 7,000, again, I've just put them together there, but you would show them individually. You've used 26 followed by seven. That's 33,000 in total, leaving you 6,000 pounds worth of loss to carry forward. And that's set off against any part of the future total profits of the company. One final thing to look at, of course, what happens to those qualifying charitable donations? Well, not much use of those here, of course. In the current period, there's nothing to set it off against. In the previous period, the nine month period, nothing to set it off against. So both of those figures will be lost. And again, we put that as a note, qualifying chargeable donations there, those two figures of 500 pounds in each of those periods, those will be lost, they will be wasted. There's nothing to deduct them from. We were still left with 21,000 pounds worth of total profit, of course, for what was the year ended March 20, and therefore there's still sufficient profit to deduct that donation paid from. What it means, of course, here in terms of the impact of that lost claim, there won't be anything payable, there won't be any profits for the current period. But in relation to the two previous periods, repayments of corporation tax will be available to you. Back in the nine month period to December 20, we'd have shown total profits 26, less donations paid 500. Back then they would have been used that would have left £25,500 worth of TTP. That would have been taxed at 19%, but now there is no TTP. So the repayment, if you had needed to compute it, would have been 25500 the TTP of the period as it stood, at 19%. That now, that tax will be repaid. In relation then to the year ended March 20, you've used 7,000 pounds of loss, achieving relief at 19%. So 19% of 7,000 would be a further repayment. So there you can see that with the carry back claim, you're getting the cash flow advantage of having sadly just sustained the loss, you're getting money back from HMRC in the terms of repayment of corporation tax for the earlier periods as it comes to here. The balance of the loss, there's nothing else you can do with that other than carry forward, where again, as we said, that was carry forward against any part, set off against part of, well, any part that should say, of the future total profits of the company. Good. Back we go to our notes, therefore, and the next part, the penultimate part of these notes, is as we vaguely just briefly introduced at the end of the previous session, what happens on cessation of trading? Because on cessation of trading, there's nothing to carry the forward the loss to. 
So the only way that they can give you a better chance of using the loss usually made in that final period of trading is to allow a more extended carry back. And what's going to happen here is any losses sustained in the final 12 months of trading, which will in our exam equate to the final accounting period of trading, that carry back period is extended to 36 months for losses incurred in the 12 months prior to the cessation of trading. So instead of a 12 month carry back, we've added on another two years, we've got a 36 month carry back. Now again, as ever, in order to carry back, you've got to make the current period claim first against total profits. So yet again, you are going to produce your model answer with a columnar basis to show the use and application of the losses against the profits, where you'll have all of these accounting periods here to list out. Now you'll need all of them because there is our whopping great loss. Yeah, we're in this, we call this terminal loss relief. We're in this terminal loss situation whereby a limited ceased trading on the 31st of March 21. And we can see why we've just sustained that whacking great big loss of £97,000. Therefore, the first use in the current period against total profits, you would then be able, as all of that loss is sustained in the last 12 months of trading, you would be able to go back to year ended March 20, the normal one year carry back. But we can then go back a further two years. So year ended March 19. So we've now gone back two years. Then like in example three, we see there was a change of accounting date. And that was the six months to March 18 there. So that now is one year, two years, two years, six months. So finally, therefore, we'll get back to the year ending September 17. And as we've already come back two and a half years, we will have six months here. So six twelfths of the year ended 17's profits. If, of course, and you will find there is more than enough loss with that 97,000 to go back one year, to go back two years, two and a half years, and then go against six twelfths of those total profits. Remember with your current to carry back claims, they are shown before the very final deduction of qualifying charitable donations. But as we've just said, those reliefs in the year ended March 20 and the year ended March 19, where we can see those donations were paid, those loss reliefs will be in full. They will wipe out those total profits. So those £500 there of donations will again be wasted. When you get back to this period, only six months worth of the profits will be available for this terminal loss relief, and that will still leave sufficient profit to absorb that donation, so it will still be used. So, over to you. Again, columnar format for each accounting period, where there are losses we put in nil, we want to get down to where we can get our subtotals of total profit. We're then going to leave space for the current period claim and the carry back claims. And there's going to be a lot of carry back claims here against the year ended March 20, year ended March 19, six months to March 18, and then six months of the year ended September 17. Before then getting the deduction where there's something to deduct them from, for the qualifying charitable donations. Okay, over to you, set that up, get your loss memorandum going, starting with the 97 and going back in reverse chronological order. Again, these loss reliefs are applied on a LIFO basis. Again, there, whatever was the most recent in, is that going to be first of all. We go back on a reverse last in first out basis in terms of the use of those losses. Okay, over to you, set that up. And once you've done, look to the answer, have a little look through, join me again, and I'll talk you very briefly through that. 
Well, your answer, hopefully looking suspiciously like the model answer in the back of the notes here. So again, it comes in two main parts, plus then any further workings that you need to show. But they are firstly, listing out all the relevant accounting periods, taking from the question for each such period, the figures of income, and if there were gains, then those gains, as we saw in the previous problem, and of course, any donations paid. But it is the income and gains to be recorded first, down to what would be here, total profits, before then showing the loss relief claims, they being in order current period, current year relief, and carry back relief. Again, I'll take you through that uh, before and then, if there is something to deduct them from, showing the qualifying charitable donations. Any, of course, qualifying charitable donations, as we saw in these periods, those would be unrelieved and therefore they would be wasted. Right. Set that up first of all, then set up the loss memorandum. What loss are you dealing with? The £97,000 for what was the final last accounting period, the year ended March 21. The order, again, we know well. Current period, £10,000. Show it on your loss memorandum. That leaves us with 87000 to carry back. So back we go. One year against the £34,000 there. Uh, we can keep on going, showing where each of these losses has been used. In full against the 28,000, again, wasting, sadly, those two lots of donations paid. In full there, the 16,000, again, taking out all of the total profits of that period. We would be able to get a subtotal at that point to see how much loss relief still remained. And I think after using 10 and 34 and 28 and 16, that left us with some £9,000 of loss. Back to this, the earliest period of all, and of course that carry back relief, that shown in the notes here, year ended September 17, a 12000 total profit, but only six months of that, and that's a 6000 maximum set off applied there. That would still leave profits of £6,000, and that is sufficient to still get utilisation out of that donation paid, bringing that down to the only remaining TTP of those periods for the year ended September 17 of five and a half thousand. In each of that period, and the periods up to the final period of trading, where tax had already been paid, as it would have been for the intervening periods where there were profits, they would create repayments of tax, which there would be at what well, for our purposes, 19%. Okay, again, set up the columnar working with the income and gains and loss reliefs shown, finally donations paid, and set up your loss memorandum. Those are the two essential vehicles, with notes, of course, if necessary, as regards any other issues that needed to be identified. Okay, well, we're uh, very nearly there. If we now just go back to our chapter 18 notes. And actually, there's nothing new now to deal with. What we have said all along and seen is that any losses that are not available for current and carry back claims, then other than in a cessation of trading situation, will be carried forward. And that carry forward will be against any part of the future total profits. At last, flexibility as regards how much of a loss you choose to use against those total profits. And we know the reason why we might choose to use less of the loss than we are entitled to against those total profits. Why? To still leave sufficient profit to absorb any qualifying donations paid. So let's just have a little resume of the rules we already know. If any loss remains unrelieved after current and carry back claims have been made, or indeed remember you don't have to make a current period claim, 
or even if you've made a current P claim, you don't have to make a carry back claim. That said, usually, of course, what you want to do is to get the carry back claim in order to get the repayment, the cash flow advantage of a repayment of the earlier period tax. And to make the carry back claim, then you had to do firstly the current period claim. But again, if there's anything left after any current period or carry back claims have been considered, if not indeed made, then the loss is carried forward. The carry forward relief means that any such losses carried forward for relief go against any part of future total profits. Any part, flexibility at last, of future, again, total profits of the company. There's no time limit on the carry forward period. And of course, as it's any part of the future total profits there, partial loss relief may, claims may be made. And the reason for doing that is to avoid wasting qualifying charitable donations. A claim, though it's, again, the loss is automatically carried forward, in order to get the use of that loss on your corporate tax computation in the future, a claim must be made within two years of the end of the accounting period in which the loss is to be relieved. So here we go, example five, our last example now on our corporate tax losses. APLC started trading on the 1st of April 17, and then we prepared accounts for years ended March 18, 19, 20 and 21. And there, sitting in the year ended March 20, is our trading loss of 43,000. We have two sources of income for each of these periods, our property income and our interest receivable. We've also got donations paid of £1,000 in each period. So again, you know the drill by now. We set up firstly our answer in the form of each accounting period for which we need to deal with. Again, knowing that this is a continuing business, there's no cessation of trading, that any loss has a maximum one year carry back, we know that the only periods impacted here are going to be your current period, year ended March 20, where we have total profits of 8,000. Those donations will be wasted. That will then allow a carry back claim for 12 months. That is a year end, and that will go against your 26,000 pounds there. It means that there is no carry back to the year ended March 18, and any loss left over, which <laughs> presumably there, there will be in this particular example, that will go against future total profits there, which again will be the £26,000 for the year ended March 21. I'd like you therefore to set that up, plus of course set your loss memo up for the £43,000 and show, identify where it is used in order, current period, carry back and finally carry forward. Over to you. OK, so let's see how we fared on this final exercise, therefore. Again, the only accounting periods that impact in terms of the use of the loss are these three here. But then, again, you do whatever is in the requirement there and you show the full answer accordingly. So we need to set up that working, plus, of course, our loss memorandum and then any further notes that we consider may be necessary. Again, to begin with, just transfer the figures straight across from the question, putting in, of course, a nil assessment where there was a loss. Leave space here in terms of having got what would be the total profits of each of the relevant accounting periods. Leave space before any deduction of qualifying charitable donations, if, of course, it's uh, possible to use those donations. Um, in which you can show both the current period and the carry back, and indeed thereafter, the carry forward relief. The order, of course, is always the current period first of all. We've got £8,000 worth of total profit in the current period. So starting with, in our loss memo, 
the loss of 43,000, as you see there. Then that's 8,000 that is used. That brings it down to nil, and therefore the qualifying charitable donations, those are unrelieved such donations there, that would be lost. We are then able to do our carry back claim, 26,000, it's the accounted period of loss is preceded by a full year end, a full 12 month period. So all of that 26,000 pounds will go. And as we can see, there's more than enough loss still remaining after the current period of claim. 8 from 43 was 35 and 26,000 is used now. Again, sadly resulting in a further thousand pounds worth of those donations paid having been lost. That leaves us in our memorandum here with £9,000 of loss that remains. That is carried forward, again to go against total profits, but of course any part of future total profits. Not an issue here with the numbers as they stand. There is only £9,000 of loss that remains. That still leaves in there £17,000 worth of profit, which is sufficient therefore, to make use of the donations paid. Now, that was it in relation to the numbers I've provided you with. Just at the very bottom here, I've just changed the figure of loss that if the remaining loss carried forward, so after we'd still done the current period and the carry back claim, which we will, but if the loss there to be carried forward instead of being 9,000, which is what we had there, had been, say, 29,000. The figure of 29,000 is not, uh, again, important of itself uh, being exactly 29. The point is, it's more than 26,000 pounds. And therefore, we are not going to use all of that 29,000 loss against that £26,000 of future total profit. Why? Because of that donation paid. So you therefore should be able to very quickly see that we will... Oops, don't know what's happened there. Let me see. If I can get back to it. There we go. What we will very quickly see is that if we've got a thousand pounds worth of donations paid, which we have, and 26,000 pounds worth of total profits before deducting, then if you've got 29,000 loss remaining to go forward, the claim made would have been restricted to 25,000. It was restricted to less if you wanted to, but it would be to 25,000. So as not to waste the qualifying charitable donations of a thousand pounds. Partial claim is not, of course, available for either the current or carry back claims. That luxury was not afforded you with the carry back claim. With the carry forward claim, it is. The company, of course, could decide not to make the current period and then the previous period claim, but to carry forward all of the loss in order to avoid wasting on a carry forward any future qualifying charitable donations paid. Obviously, going forward, you make a decision anyway as to whether or not you believe that you've got the sufficient finance to make those qualifying charitable donations. But if you are going to maintain your commitment to support that particular charity or charities, then you know on a carry forward, you don't have to worry about wasting those donations paid in terms of the tax relief that they would achieve, you're able to limit the loss that you use on a carry forward claim. The loss that therefore not used can be carried forward to reduce future profits and give future tax savings while still taking advantage of the deduction for the donations paid in that period. The problem, of course, with the carry forward is there's nothing now that flows back to you in the form of a repayment of tax from an earlier period. Now, when we first started our study of uh, ta corporate tax, we made mention, and we saw on our fact sheet of rates and allowances, that we've had a steady 19% rate of corporate tax. But every year when the Chancellor of the Exchequer gets up and reads out his budget statement, 
he could change that rate of tax. So if we believed that, or if the announcement had already been made in advance, that the tax rate in the next and in future accounting periods was going to rise for 19%, there that would give you another reason why you might choose to carry forward that loss, rather than getting an immediate benefit with a saving and a repayment computed at 19%. If I carry forward, not only can I preserve the benefit of the tax relief on the donations that I'm going to continue to pay to my favourite charities, but it would also mean that the profits that I am relieving would otherwise have been taxed at a higher rate. Maybe the rate goes to 20, 21 percent, whatever it might be. I can save tax in the future at a higher rate. So if my cash flow position wasn't bad, I could cope. I don't need to get that benefit in. Then that would be another reason for potentially choosing to carry forward to get the benefit of the relief in the future against profits that would have been taxed at the higher rate. Something to think of there. Uh, again, we'll be moving now, having dealt with the uh, corporate tax computation in all its glory and the use of the various losses that the business, the company may sustain in an accounting period. Having dealt with that, we've seen that chargeable gains feature on that corporate tax computation. Remember, companies do not pay CGT, they pay corporation tax on their chargeable gains as well as on their income because it's the taxable total profit that is subjected to corporate tax. Well, in the next few chapters, we'll revise back over the capital gains issues that we saw before that are relevant to corporate tax and not just individuals. Those issues that are relevant to corporate tax and we'll look at the differences. There's one main difference that arises as regards how we compute gains or losses and how then those, well, we've seen how losses, of course, are used there, but uh, how we compute those gains in order to include them within the corporate tax computation. After that, uh, chapter 22, we said was groups. So again, before we get to chapter 22, it'd be a good idea to go back and think about the issues that I spoke of earlier about related 51% group companies and about the idea of group relief when dealing with losses, which we spoke of, uh, I think, in the first lecture uh, of these, uh, these couple of lectures on uh, uh, corporate tax losses. That would be worth looking at before we move on to chapter 22 and groups. But yes, next time we see you, it will be discuss how to compute chargeable gains and allowable losses so far as corporate tax is concerned. Okay, as ever, I look forward to seeing you then.